4. 1 John chapter number 4. Well, we'll start in chapter 3, amen? And then we'll go to chapter 4. There's some good stuff in there. 1 John chapter 3. I'll preach out of chapter 4 in just a few minutes. 1 John chapter 3. Again, appreciate you being here. I don't plan on preaching too long. Uh, I think we'll be out by morning. Mm -hmm. uh, go home, get you some breakfast, shower, and go to work. But uh, I, I think you'll be able to make that. Uh, but we want to be a blessing tonight. And, uh, you know, God loves us in spite of us. Sometimes we can really booger things up, can't we? Say it wrong, do it wrong, be wrong. Uh, sometimes we hurt people, don't realize we hurt them. Sometimes, um, you know, we just we mess it up. And yet God still loves us. How we're so unlike that sometimes. And we don't need to be like that. Love covers a multitude of sins. You know what I'm saying? And um, so uh, I want to read some verses here tonight. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, the Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nobody can read that like it's meant to be read. I mean, that statement is an emphatic statement. I mean, it is a statement of fact. It's a statement of encouragement. Behold, what manner of love. I mean, think about it. He, John is trying to say, man, God loves us. And, 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 and what manner that must be for him to call us sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Now go on down and um, over to chapter 4. And um, we'll begin reading in verse 1. I think it'd be appropriate. Um, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out in the world. Just because it has Christian hyphenated on it, don't mean it's God. Come on. I ain't going to preach on that night, because I'll get stirred up and get <laughs> flesh. I, I am so sick of these, these naive Christians going around thinking that what I, I'll never forget. I'll tell us on my sister. I know it's on YouTube. That's okay. Leave it in there. Okay? And if I preach her funeral, I'm going to bring this up. Amen. I'm just kidding. My sister, I have one younger sister, and when she was coming along as a teenager, she loved country music. And she went to a George Jones concert one time. And boy, you talk about me berating her over that. I let her have. You ain't got no business going there. Well, he's a Christian. Well, see, my sister got saved a year or so before I did. You know? And and so I was I was like, and though she's younger than me, I'm like, Stephanie, I said, you said you're saved. You ain't got no business going up to a tongue. I said, that guy's a drunk. I said, think about what he's singing. Well, he said God bless at the end of the concert. <laughs> and I, boy, I like to come unglued. Yeah. Now, if my sister was sitting her here, I'd tell it right in front of her. So I have, I don't hold anything back on that. And I've, I've done that to her before anyhow. So. Um, but understand something, that just because it's got Christian attached to it, don't mean that it is necessarily godly, okay? Mm -hmm. Hereby know we the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist where ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. I think that's pretty plain language, amen? amen. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us, now pay attention now. Beloved, let us love one another. Notice that code right for love is of God. Notice the semicolon. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. 
Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation or the satisfaction for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected or secured in us. Lord, we love you tonight. Not the way that we should, but we ask you tonight in the name of Jesus to forgive us of our sins and fill us with our spirit. Lord, for just the next few minutes, I pray you give me power and unction to preach and to share what you put on my heart this afternoon. Lord, I, I, our church needs to be loved on just a little bit tonight. And I, I pray you'd help us. I pray we'd see you in a different way tonight. And we need help. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you're in the habit of underlining in your Bible, um, I'd underline that phrase in verse 10, but, he, but that he loved us. You know, it's interesting. When we converse with others, when we communicate through the, the written whether it be uh, in a book form, magazine form, periodical, um, you know, epistle or letter form, when we're communicating in a written way or an oral way, we are confined by our experiences and by our perspective on things. Okay? And when you read your Bible, sometimes when you become so familiar with it, um, you miss some great things because you've been looking at it a certain way and you might miss something. Especially, you know, maybe well, I've read that before, so your mind goes in neutral when you're reading through there, but you're not reading it. You're skimming. Right. You know, how many times have you been reading through something and it's like it's written in boxcar letters, you know? <laughs> oh, I ain't seen it. Well, yeah, you yeah, have. You've been reading through that all the time, but you haven't paid no attention to it, see? Well, here's the thing. I know that all of us tonight would say that we love God. But that love did not originate with us. Now, from a certain perspective, you might say, well, yeah, because I started loving him. But who started the loving? He did. Even when he's unlovable. <laughs> Isn't that something? Right. Even, even when he's unlovable. Right. It's dangerous to sit behind Miss, beside Miss Holder when I'm preaching on love. Amen. <laughs> It's dangerous. It's a dangerous thing. You need to be careful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes, sometimes, um, you know, we, we get we get so self-absorbed and so self, um, I don't know, just, we just, all we can see is us. We can't see past the nose on our face. You know what I'm saying? And we are so focused on our needs and our, that we forget it ain't all about us. God loved us long before we was lovable, and we That's still right. ain't lovable. That's right. That's um, right. You know, the Bible teaches us that we've been purchased over and over again. If you've been saved, you've been redeemed. That's a purchase, right? Mm -hmm. God purchased us. Now, if if Ken was to go down here to the sale barn and he was to buy uh, a bull um, to replace the one that he has in his pasture now for his, uh, his herd, if he was going to go down and buy a bull at the sale, I mean, he's going to make sure that his investment is worth what he paid for. I guarantee you, man, Ken, he knows, he knows uh, cows and, and uh, cattle, and he, he, he can look at one. He can tell you what, what it's worth. He has a pretty good eye for that sort of thing. He raises some good calves up there. And I've been up there. I know what I'm talking about. And so, um, not that I know much about cattle. I just know Ken. So Ken knows what he's doing. And so, uh, Ken, if he has to go to the sale barn, He's going to make sure that whatever he buys is worth what he's paid for. And I also know Ken. He is not going to pay one cent over what he thinks it's worth. I just know Ken. Am I right, Ken? Amen. He's not going to pay one cent over what it's worth. But you know what? When God purchased us, sometimes I wonder if he really knew what he was getting. He, he did know what he was getting. And he didn't get the good end of the deal. I tell you what, he got the short end of the stick. Amen. And uh, we got the better end of the deal. He loved us. Now, you know, it's been a long time since I have felt like I have been unloved by a lot of people. I grew up in a broken home. My mom and dad split up when I was 
five years old, later was divorced. Um, my mama went through quite a bit. My mama, uh, uh, her, she passed away September 12th last year, so this week will mark one year that she's been gone. I had been thinking about that every day for the last several days. And um, I remember some of the things that my mama went through. And uh, one of the things that my mama felt was that she was unloved. And I also felt I was in love because I felt abandoned. My wife felt abandoned. A lot of you, you feel a lot of things. But when you feel in love, and then to feel loved, man, that's something. And you know, we were enemies of God at one time, and now that we're saved, we, we love Him, but, but we have experienced His love. Amen? And, you know, just to know that He loves us. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us. And He demonstrated that love. But God committed His love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I tell you, that's good stuff. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to preach to you tonight just for a little bit with the help of the Lord. Why we should love God. First of all, we should love God because of the past. Because of the past. Everybody's got a past in here. Do you know that? Sometimes you people back in when I was younger, uh, you hear people say, "Well, so and so has a past," like you know, they, like they knew something. Like there's a, hey, everybody's got a past. Right. I don't care how how pious you are or how many scriptures, for everybody's got a past. Amen. None of us are proud of our past when it comes to sin. But I tell you what, thank God that uh, God loved me. I love Him because He He took care of my past. In fact, all of my sins. When Jesus died on the cross, all my sins were future tense. Amen? So well, all the sins I've committed in my life up to, to right now, that's my past. And hallelujah, he, we ought to love him because of the past. I tell you, there's, when I go down memory lane and I think about all the things that God has done to display his love toward me that I have actually seen. Again, I preached this morning, there are some things that that you know you just can't see with the naked eye. That's Amen. Right. Right. And there's a lot of things that God has done in Andrew Shank's life from the time he was a little boy before he could even defend himself or feed himself or uh, whatever. I mean, God took care of me. And by the way, God took care of you too. That's Amen. Right. And and boy, God loved you. Even before he saved you, God loved you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, God loved you. And man, he gave you some good parents. Well, you, my parent, my daddy beat me. My mama done this. My, God gave you good parents. You just have to believe that. Now, your parent may not have taught you or been the, the best person to you, but God still gave you parents that gave you physical life. That's right. Amen. 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 So they must be good for something. Amen. Amen. Thank God for, for moms and dads. Amen. But God gave, God provided for you. God protected you. And I can tell you story after story after story where God took care of me. Uh, and I'm going down memory lane quite a bit here as of late. My nephew Nathan is going to Bible college now. And boy, you're talking about green wet behind the ears. My, 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 my. And last night I talked to him on the phone at length about some things. And, and, uh, and I was asking him some questions. And I've been thinking. I, I, I was thinking about some things. I know he's going to have a hard time, you know, paying that school bill. Man, that school bill in there now semester is a whole lot more than it was 20 years ago when I went there. Amen. Yeah. And I thought, man, how's he going to pay for that? And I was quizzing him a little bit, asking him questions. And you know, I was talking to somebody this week about this very subject. You know, you, you love people. You want to help them. And you know, every parent wants to make sure their kids don't have to go through some of the same stuff they went through. So we, we take care of a lot of stuff for that younger generation. And we forget that all that stuff made us who we are today. And you're removing the opportunity for your kids to become you by you taking care of some of the stuff that they all deal with. And learn to deal with, amen. And um, so I was thinking, am I really helping him if I if I do certain things? And uh, I, I, I just don't know about that. I just don't know. I can make it easy on him, but I don't know if that's best for my nephew. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can make it easier on my kids, but I don't know if that's necessarily the right way. I can make things easier on the church at times. I don't know that that's always the right thing. 
But listen, God has provided for me. When I was in Bible college, uh, man, I, I was, it, it was amazing how you want to pay your school bill off. And before I went to Bible college, I had to learn to pay my insurance every month. And I remember one Saturday morning, I went into the shop over there at the Rubs Garage. I said, DJ, I need some money. He said, really? I said, yeah, I need like 55, 60 bucks, whatever it was. And I needed, I needed some money now to go help pay my insurance. I got to have some. Now, mind you, EJ gave me money all the time to help me do everything. But on this particular day, I mean, I wasn't about to ask him for the money. And he says, well, you know, I know so-and-so across the street over there. I think uh, he probably could use your help. He was asking for you the other day. Maybe you ought to go over and see if he still needs some help. He said, he's right over there at that house. I walked across the street. So I went over there. He's an old gentleman. He had an old home place beside where he lived. He was changing window weights in the, in the walls. And uh, he needed some help. So I went over and knocked on the door. I said, EJ said, you might need some help over here today. He said, I sure do. And you know, by the end of that day, with all that I needed for that gentleman, I had more than what I needed for the day. That's, and, and that amazed EJ, you know, today uh, he died, he talked about stuff like that. And that's just one episode. What I'm saying is, is God loved me. And he took care of that need and he provided avenues for me in the past. And all of that serves to encourage us in, in, in the present, amen? God's provided for you and I in the past. He's met our needs in the past. He's took care of our sins of the past. Amen. He's took care of our families in the past. He has met with us and answered prayers and has sustained us and has encouraged us in the past. And I tell you what, we should love Him because of that. But also we should love God because of the present. Now I mentioned this morning that whenever God told Moses to tell Pharaoh Go down there and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Uh, Moses said, well, just who am I going to tell him sent me down here? And he says, you tell him the I am sent you down there. <coughs> you know what that means? That I means he's a self-existent one. <coughs> he's God. He is. Now listen, uh, I know that uh, he knows the end from the beginning. I get that. That's what Isaiah said. I understand that to a certain degree. I get the fact that God is God. Amen. And, but I'm glad he's not the God of yesterday mm -hmm. only. And I'm glad he's not the God of the future only. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he's the God of the present. Amen? Now listen, you can go down member lane, but member lane only helps you so far. Come on. I mean, we need, we need fresh oil today. Amen? Uh, we need fresh bacon bread to put on the table of show bread today. All right? Hey, we need to be sure that today our needs are met. Jesus said, pray uh, uh, that you need to be met today. Our daily, give us this day, our daily bread. Amen? Now listen, God is a very present help, the Bible says, in times of trouble. Uh, I, I thank the Lord that no matter uh, what has gone on in the past, I mean, thank, I love God for the past. Amen? I thank God for all that He's done and how He's taken care of me and met my needs. But I'm glad that that same God that was there then is still here now. Amen. Now, I may not always feel His presence. I may not always perceive His presence. I may not always see where He's at. But I promise you, He's still here today. Amen. Amen. He's the God of yesterday, today, and forever. That's what he, uh, Hebrews says there about the Lord Jesus. Now, think about this, our presence. Boy, we, we need God today, don't we? Amen. And we needed Him this morning, needed Him tonight. We need him right now. He's there. He's there. I tell you, it don't, it don't take much to, to get to knowing that he's there. You get to reading his word and you get to praying, you get to talking to him just a little bit. He inhabits the praise of his people. His spirit presently resides in you if you've been saved. And as long as you hadn't grieved the Holy Spirit or quenched the Holy Spirit, he's there. He wants to minister to your needs. He wants to encourage you. One thing I pray almost every day, I ain't going to say every day because some days I, I forget to pray for this because I get sidetracked early in the morning. But most days I pray that God would draw my wife and my children and this church family into the prayer closet. Lord, draw our church family to you. Yeah. Lord, whatever it takes, burden them to read their Bible. Yeah. Burden them to go to pray. And, and Lord... Burning their heart, that desire to live for you. And I tell you what, I pray that for y'all. 
I pray that for me. Because you know what? We can get up here and tell about the past. And we can proclaim what's going to take place in the future. But I'm glad that right now I have what we need. Amen? I have and you have what we need. We need God right now. Thank God He's the God of the present. Man, even when I sin right now, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9 over here, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Talks in chapter 1 about if we walk in the light, as He is in light, we have fellowship one with another. We can fellowship with God today. Amen. Every moment of every day if you wanted to. Amen. Right. I mean, don't look at me like a calf staring at a new gate. Hallelujah, man. God loves us. Amen. And we ought to love Him because right. of the present, because right. of what He's doing. That's right. Now, we may not always see, like that young man that was Elisha's servant, we may not always see uh, the whole picture. And it's probably a good thing that we don't see the whole picture. But we, we ought to remember that God is working. Amen. Sometimes I felt the enemy. I couldn't see it, but I knew he was around. I've been places and I just felt Satan right there. Yeah. I've been around people and it's just like, man, something's up with you. <laughs> something's up with that person. I've also been around some of God's people. I was like, man, that person knows God. I'm telling you, I, I, man, my spirit bear with that, that man, they know God. Hallelujah. I mean, that's good stuff right there. But we all love God because of right now. Man, he's met needs today. Man, I was praying we'd have a good day at the laundry mat. Man, you couldn't. Boy, I tell you, when I went there this afternoon, I bet there was 20 people in that laundry mat. I don't think there was a washer open there for a while. I got out of there as fast as I went in there. <laughs> I, when I went back here this afternoon, we had some problems on machines. I had to cough up money. Man, I hate doing that. And uh, I hate giving money back to people. Yeah, that's bad to say, isn't it? I just don't like doing that. But I had to. It was the right thing to do. You know how that rolls. But if I weren't there, I wouldn't have to have done that. <laughs> just kidding. And people know me. They know where to track me down. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but you know, I, I enjoyed that. And, and that, 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 that's going to be a need. Amen. That's the way to be. Praise the Lord. I mean, we needed God to be with us in our business meeting tonight. Thank God that He did. Man, we needed God to be with us this morning. And we did. Man, I tell you what, I hadn't slept so good in all my life as I had the last few days. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. Man, I went laid on my bed this afternoon and this older and fixed our family a wonderful day. And by the way, let me just say this. Have you fixed in green beans and in the tables for my own I'm going to tell you what. That woman may have been a lot of things. That woman could. Man, he was right there with her. I, I, I picked it all out, man. I was eating, I ate about all the rest of them. Some of there was some meat left. That would get devoured in a little while, but it hadn't already been devoured by that boy right there. But <laughs> then I got into that. Man, I was tearing that up. Of course, the carbs, you know, just sent me out. I, I, mean, I was here to do a lot, lot of things. I went out of my bed. I was out. And all of a sudden, I woke up. That quarter to four. And I'm thinking, man, what day is it? <laughs> what day is it? Oh, it's Sunday. Oh, man. I got to get up and go to church, man. I, I had my alarm set. But I mean, I would, I got such good sleep. I was in a dream. I shoot people. And, stuff. and I was looking for an Uzi or something. And I, I, don't, I mean, I was, I was into some heavyweight stuff, man. <laughs> And, but but I but you know then it's Miss Hart Miss Holder's fault because she fixed in green beans and potatoes. Evidently that's what got them guns in my head. I mean I was in a in a firefight somewhere, but I slept good. Amen. I woke up. I was wore out and sweat. You know I slept good. But when I woke up, when I woke up, I felt like a brand new man. And I got I said, man, I'm ready to go to me tonight. Hallelujah. We should love God because of prayer. And last of all, we should love God because of the future. Now I'm going to tell you something. I believe this with all my heart. Great Commission Baptist Church has had some great days in the past. Amen. We have. We have had some great days in the past. But I think our greatest days are yet in the future. I believe that there are things that we're going to see together as we walk with God, as we try to fulfill the will of God for our church going forward. I believe we're going to see some things that's just, it's, it's, it's going to be a wonder and amazement. 
you know, Miss Holder was telling me before service tonight, she's hinted at this before, and some things come full circle tonight before service this evening. The church that they used to attend up in South Dakota, uh, they had some families years ago leave the church because the, the pastor felt led, and, and obviously some of the leadership of the church as well, that they ought to get to a printing ministry. There was a big web, uh, a web press, a great big press, $75,000 it was going to cost for this thing. They could print scriptures, the John and Romans, and things like that. This was years ago. And they didn't have the money to buy it. They didn't have a place to store it. But they bought it by, they got it by faith. And God took care of everything. A place to store it, and take care of the monies and all. But some people lost confidence in the pastor and caused problems and different things. And do you know that that same press was stored five years in a, in a Ford dealership, rent-free. Every bit of the monies to pay for that thing was paid off. There wasn't a bit of debt for the church. And not only that, but that very press, though it's been added on to a number of times as they've grown, that same press printed the John and Romans that this church used to help get started in 2011. Did you hear what I said? Isn't that amazing? Thank God for a pastor that had a vision. Amen. Thank God for a church family that was obedient and walked by faith. They couldn't explain that God wants us to have it. And they stepped out. And it took a while for them to, it to materialize for them to use it. But God took care of it. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. Now, those are some great things. Great days. But our, our better days are yet ahead. We have a bright future. Amen. One of these days, Jesus is going to come back. Amen. And uh, I'm hoping to meet the rapture. I don't necessarily want to die physically. I'm not looking forward to that. But uh, other than the fact I'll meet Jesus one day, I don't like pain. I just don't like pain. I don't care any kind of pain. Me don't get along. I don't like pain. I said I don't like pain having this whole. I don't like pain. But uh, I will say this. That one of these days we're going to meet Jesus either in the rapture or by way of the grave. Amen. And you know what? I'm glad that that's just the beginning. You know, when you think about eternity, my mind, and it's hard for my mind to absorb mm -hmm. the concept of no time. Yeah. But, you know, on this earth, we're bound by time. Yeah. We're bound by certain laws of physics that God has created and put us in, right? But, you know, there's part of me that's going to live forever, part of you is going to live forever. Somewhere either in heaven or hell. And God has got a place for me. God's got a place for you. He's prepared a, a place in heaven just for me. Yeah. Just for me. I've been expected different places and someone has made preparations for me to stay in this place or that place or whatever. But I tell you what, the place in heaven, there's nobody can prepare a place like you. Amen. Amen. One of these days we're going to see it. Mm. One of these days we're going to be able to look into his eyes. One of these days we're going to be able to say in person, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. That's right. Man, we ought to love God because of the future. Mm -hmm. That's a bright future. It's a future that we don't deserve. It's a future that's been bought and paid for with the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank God that one day we're going to be able to stand before God. I tell you, there's a lot we could have said tonight in all these points, but I'm telling you, we all love God because of the past, we all love God because of the present, and we all love God because of the future. Mm -hmm. Here it is, uh, love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. That's right. Amen? Amen? God's been good. Amen. And we all rejoice in that tonight. Amen? Amen.